Aloha KCF Ohana. This is Mitch. And I'm Layla. We trust you enjoyed celebrating Jesus this season. Today, we have Dave Oyadamari, who will be sharing about a real-life application using the Black of Eve, Experiencing God Realities. Right now, let's pray and ask God to fill our homes with His presence as we worship. Heavenly Father, thank you for this Christmas weekend. We're just so blessed to be able to spend time with uh, friends and family and loved ones to just lift you up and to remember you for all that you've done for us. And thank you for getting us this year. And we look forward to um, an even better Happy New Year and 2022. Thank you in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's head to worship. Us. We 
welcome you here, Lord Jesus. refuge for the poor, a shelter from the storm. This is our God, and He will wipe away your tears and return your wasted years. This is our God, so call upon His name. He is mighty, say, this is our God. This is our God. A father to the orphan, a healer to the broken, this is our God. He brings peace to our madness and comfort in our sadness. This is our God. So call upon his name. He is mighty. Say, this is our God. This is the one we have waited for. This is the one we have waited for. This is the one we have waited for. Jesus, Lord and Savior. This is our God. A fountain for the thirsty, a lover for the lonely. This is our God. brings glory to the humble and crowns for the faithful and this is our God so call upon his name he is mighty to save this is our God this is the one we have waited for this is the one we have waited for. This is the one we have waited for. Jesus, Lord and Savior. This is our God. This is our God. This is our God. This is our God. You are the one we have waited for. You are the one we have waited for. You are the one we have waited for. Sing, you are the one. You are the one we have waited for. You are the one we have waited for. You are the one we have waited for. Save 
Savior, Jesus, Lord and Savior, Jesus, Lord and Savior. This is our God. This is our God. KCF, this is Dave Oyadamari Chun, and I am broadcasting from the KCF studios in beautiful 
Downtown Honolulu. <laughs> on the edge of Kaka'ako. <laughs> Anyway, now that's out of the way. Hey guys, it's really good to see you and uh, be here in the broadcast studios of Kakako Christian Fellowship. Uh, I have the pleasure to just uh, welcome you uh, right after Christmas. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas with your loved ones, your family, and friends. Especially like times like this, we gotta treasure those moments, right? You know, a lot of you guys know that I'm a huge college football fan. And in particular, um, I'm a Hawaii Rainbow Warrior football fan ever since I was kid time. And um, there was this program uh, related to UH football called the Dick Tomey Show. This is kind of like in the late 70s, early 80s, when I was still a little, little, little kid. <laughs> but anyway, um, the Dick Tomey Show is really where I start to find my love for football. Uh, see, I love the physicality as a spectator watching the, the game at Aloha Stadium, and I actually did see a game, I think, at the, um, the Termite Palace, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, right across Chunkies. But anyway, um, what I really loved about the Dick Tomey Show, and, and Dick Tomey was the head coach of the University of Hawaii football team, and arguably the, the, the one who orchestrated the rise of the football program uh, to its prominence. And um, anyway, uh, Coach Tomey was just an amazing teacher, and on the Dick Tomey Show, which aired every Sunday afternoon, right before Let's Go Fishing, and uh, after the Saturday night football game, he would play the, the film of the football game, and he would just narrate what was going on. He would uh, talk about why they were calling a certain play, the formations they saw on the field, um, what the coaches were thinking, why they made certain decisions. Um, and it was just an amazing opportunity for me as a little kid to watch this and just realize that there was so much planning and preparation and strategy that went into football beyond just as a spectator watching, you know, guys catch the ball and smash each other. Uh, there was strategy. And what it reminded me of is uh, just so much there's, there's, there's planning going on in our lives. And when I recently read uh, Henry Blackaby's uh, Experience in God, as we all went through the series in recently, um, I, it reminded me of the Dick Tomey show in this way, is that the first reality that Blackaby talks about is that God is always at work around us, always that he has this greater plan that maybe sometimes we don't even see. And it reminded me of the illustration of the Dick Tomey show. Because you could be a spectator in football and watch the game, but it's not until the coach able to unpack the film for you and explain what was going on, what was the strategy, what was the plans that were put in motion, even in practice leading up to the game and how did they execute or not execute. And it was just so fascinating to me. And I think, isn't that our life? With the Father God, the coach of heaven upstairs. And if we were to replay uh, our life as a film and we were to watch it with the coach, you know, Jesus himself, and he would say, this is what we were orchestrating in your life, Dave. This is how we were preparing you. This is how we were putting the pieces in place we would marvel and be like, there's no way I would have known that, right? Isn't that the truth? Like we would, we look back sometimes at our life and we say, man, it's amazing what God was at work doing. Even when I didn't even see it, I didn't even know that he was at work. So that really kicks us off today. And I would say that if you, if you turn to one of the most often quoted passages in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says this, it says, For you know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. No matter what circumstances we're in, good or bad, right now, at this season in our life, know and trust and embrace the truth that God is at work in your life and he has a good plan in store for you to prosper you and your family. It often uh, is quoted in the book of Romans, uh, another one 
where it says this in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Did you catch that last part, you guys? It's, it's who have been called according to his purpose. Whose purpose? Our purpose? Our plan? Our will? No. It's God's purpose. His purpose and design for us. I think we got to pause for a moment and think about where you are in your life right now. What do you need to adjust in your life because God is doing something different around you and in you? What circumstance are you in today that maybe it should cause us to pause a little bit and say, God, where are you working here in this circumstance, good or bad, in your life right now? And how do we join God in what he's doing? You see, it's not, God doesn't get glorified by making our plans succeed. God receives the glory when his plans succeed. See, for me, I know we just finished this Experiencing God series, and you know, I've been a Christian for close to 30 years. And it's amazing to me that as I was going through it, one of the big things that stuck out for me, and my key takeaway, was simply that first reality, that God is always at work in everything. In, in all, he's always at work in, in around us, always. See, what Blackaby says in Experiencing God here, he says, understanding what God is about to do where I am is more important than telling God what I want to do for him. God doesn't need us. How many times in my life did I pray that prayer of open and closed doors, right? You know the one I'm talking about. We prayed for each other, we prayed for ourselves, and we say, God, I have a dilemma. I have a decision to make. I have this couple of job opportunities, or I'm wondering if I should enroll in this school or, or that school, or uh, purchase a house, or rent a house, or put an offer in this house. God, would you open and close doors, right? You know the prayer. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that prayer. It's a great prayer. But I think what the, what the reality of God is always at work is, is, should tell us is that while that's a great prayer to open and close doors, doesn't it first start with where our heart is? That it's not we want God to come to this point and, and tell us which way to go. That's great, you know, like have God help us discern the right path. But more importantly, shouldn't the prayer really start with, God, where are you? Where are you already moving? Where are you already working? And how can I join you, God, in that? Wow, that was so different. That is, that is one of those moments, I, I, I go through that and I say, where was my heart in all those moments, in all those prayers where I said, God, would you open and close doors? Was I actually praying to the almighty God of the universe and saying, and treating God, the almighty, as if he's a genie in the bottle? And what I want God to do is do this thing for me and open and close and door for me. When really my prayer should have been, God, where are you already working, God? What, are you, what is your purposes? Can I join you in what you're already doing, Lord? See, it's, gonna, it's on the screen here. Am I asking the almighty God of the universe to be my genie in the bottle and give me a sign or is my heart in the right place by first earnestly trying to understand what God is about to do where I am? Blackaby had called out again. He said, open and closed doors do not always indicate God's guard guidance. Isn't that true? 
So let's make our hearts right with God. Replace any will of our own with God's will. Any plans we have already made or are making need to be set aside and say, God, what are your plans? Less of us, more of him, right? That was so profound to me, guys, when I was going through this. And like I said, I've, I've now been a Christian almost three decades. And for me, it was just like, you know, like I got nailed between the eyes. What is God doing? And so I thought this morning it'd be great if we could look in our real life for a real example of real people facing a real challenge, as we always say. And how do we practically go about replaying the tape in our lives and seeing what God is already doing? And how do we join Him? And most recently, we, we all embarked as a church on a project called the Aloha Angel Tree. And as it turns out, this wasn't a project that was started and finished in four weeks. But actually, when we look back, God was working on the Aloha Angel Tree for much longer. And remarkably, what you'll hear in a minute is how God used my son, Joshua, to illustrate a very important lesson about first seeking God's will, not our own will, not our own plans, not our own design. And I'd like to invite Joshua up here now to, to kind of share a little bit of this journey of the Aloha Angel Tree. Hello, everybody. This is uh, my son, Joshua. And um, good for you to be here, Josh. Thanks for joining. <laughs> so Josh, tell us, um, uh, how old are you and what grade are you in? I'm 15 and I am a sophomore in high school. Okay. And so... Aloha Angel Tree, this project we just completed as a church and you know you led for us. Um, describe it, what is it? So essentially the Aloha Angel Tree is an online service that connects those with need to those that are willing to provide needs for people, provide mm. for them. Okay, got it, and how does it work? So we collect needs, or sometimes people give their needs to us and we put them on the website, alohaangeltree.org, in the form of ornaments. And then other people will come and select the tags of those needs and then buy, wrap, and send the present of the need to us. And we give it to the people with need. Cool. And so this concept of this online service, alohaangeltree.org, right? Um, where did it come from? Like what, like? It was, um, well, normally we have a, we used to have an in-person one mm. at KCF where it was a physical Christmas tree. Right. And there would be physical ornaments that Sunday school would make with uh -huh. the needs on them. Okay. But due to the pandemic, we had to stop that. And so uh. we originally were planning to do an online one about last year, but it was too busy, so it didn't work out. So then we did it again this year, and it worked this time. <laughs> it worked. Okay. So it's it's an online Christmas tree with ornaments it is the yeah. basic premise. Mm -hmm. So is this a Christmas gift-giving service then? or? Yeah, it does that. That's what usually an angel tree is for. But we're also planning to do it all year round since the needs of the people is all year round, not just during Christmas. Got it. Got it. So, um, okay. Um, where did it, like, how did this come about? Like, how did, how did this whole Aloha Angel Tree start now? Like, where did it come from? So, the, you know, like I said before, the Aloha Angel Tree was originally an idea by you, Dad, last year. Hmm to make an online angel tree for all year round, but then it didn't really work out. It didn't and go anywhere because the, the leader was not so good. <laughs> and, uh, well, what was it? 
in my Boy Scout troop, we are working on a merit badge oh. called Citizenship in the Community. And one of the requirements was to find a nonprofit, an organization that's helping with the community hmm. and learn about what they do and how you can help and even volunteer for eight hours or more wow. at the uh, organization. Okay. And so we came across the the shelter, which mm -hmm. is the transitional homeless shelter in Kahalu'u with the igloo domes for mm -hmm. the single women and children, mm -hmm. which is uh, what the Aloha Angel Tree is working with. And hmm. we found the two ways to help with them. And the first one was there's some agricultural land mm -hmm. that they were working on clearing out. And so okay. we did some volunteering there with the Boy Scout troop. But then the second part was the Aloha Angel Tree. Ah, I see, I see. So there was this need for the, the residents at this shelter, yeah, this homeless shelter. Yeah, they have ah. needs, and so that was a way to provide those. Okay. How did, how did the Boy Scouts get connected with the shelter? Like, why the shelter? So in the Merit Badge, we were, one of the things we did was we brainstormed issues that mm. we thought in, were in our community and that we were interested in. and. The two main ones that came up was like North Korean missile crisis, <laughs> and then homelessness. Okay. So okay. homelessness, obviously, probably easier to find a nonprofit organization solving <laughs> that issue. And so that's how we got. That's how we got to that. So so this is what fifteen and sixteen year old boys in high school think about. It's the North Korean missiles or homelessness. I'm so glad you guys chose homelessness, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if there's a nonprofit in Hawaii that's working on the North Korean missile crisis. Um, maybe guys out at uh, Camp Smith or something, <laughs> the military side. Okay, but so, um, um, like, let's let's take it back a little bit because there was the physical Alo uh, angel tree, right? Before it was the Aloha Angel Tree, and um, that helped serve the needs, right? But um, there was this story I remember where. Uh, you, mom, and I were riding in a car to Waikiki. I don't remember where exactly we were going. And mom and I were talking in the front seat about perhaps KCF probably needing to discontinue the angel tree that year. And you were eavesdropping from the back seat. And tell us what happened then. I said, what? Or something <laughs> like that. We can't stop the angel tree. Why? <laughs> we do it every year, and it helps people. Yeah. Yeah. As simple as that, really. Mm -hmm, and I remember mm -hmm. clearly um, that mom and I kind of looked at each other and we were going to like, oh, man, we're, we're bad Christ, Christ followers. <laughs> our, our, our little son in the back seat is convicting us that we need to uh, continue to do the angel tree and, uh, you know, be more Christ-like. And, uh, and so um, I think at that point, you you said okay I'll lead it and you'll ask you ask mom if she would help you and and the angel tree continued and think of that many many years ago to now where now you brought it online that's pretty cool yeah, yeah. and so your your mom how is she involved in all of this right so I uh, like mom helped me with the angel tree when I was in person well she actually probably she did most of the work mm. and so. <laughs> When we were doing the online one, mom helped a lot with the things that we would do in person, doing online, like how many ornaments are usually gotten and all of that. Right. And also, she was the merit badge counselor for citizenship in the community. Ah. Uh, and so that helped connect us with Boy Scout things. Cool. Okay. So um, this Aloha Angel Tree, how did it turn out? Uh, it turned out very good. We got... 163 presents from it, which is, there's 17 families, so that's about 10, 10, 9 to 10 presents on average to each family. Wow. And there's uh, about two to three people per family on average. Uh -huh. So that's very, that's good. Yeah. And that's about two times as many as we would have normally gotten during the in-person angel tree. Mm. And that might be because the online allows us to see if more people, allow more people to help out. Got it, got it. So so the shelter and those families who graduated from the shelter were the recipients of the first Aloha Angel Tree. Uh, who were the people who were provided those needs and those gifts? 
So, of course, KCF, we um, provided some of the gifts. There was also Salt and Light Hawaii, where we also had an, a mini announcement, and they provided a lot of the gifts to my Boy Scout troop. Uh, what else? Just friends and family of everybody that were, saw the announcement somewhere and wanted to help. Wow, that's awesome. So, so let me get this right, okay? So this project, from start to finish, spanned about how long? About, not including the last year, Aloha Indo Tree, about yeah. four weeks. Four weeks! <laughs> so from, from the moment that you guys at the Boy Scout kind of came up with this concept of homelessness and how can you get involved, to then contacting the shelter and seeing how you can get involved, and then the Aloha Angel Tree goes up. You have to design a website. You uh, you have to actually. If, if we'll show a picture of the original sketch of what you <laughs> how you had sketched out the different sections of the website. Uh, then you had to, I guess, design it, look for photos, promote it, announce that we did a video. You did the video and then get it all that out there uh and uh in fact you were you you did a promo at salt and light in person that too and all of that and then we had to gather the the guests and then tell us what happened um friday uh, last week friday you had the uh uh the youth group at the church office what were you guys doing with the aloha angel tree yeah so we the youth group got together here and we organized the presents and consolidated them from all the pickup locations and organized them and cataloged them and tagged them and wrapped some of the ones that were a little unwrapped or not very good wrapped. Uh, mm. And we learned some people are very good surgeons. <laughs> okay. Um, because of the way they wrap? Okay. So it was truly uh, a team thing, right? Because, I mean, KCF. Salt and Light, you know, Pastor Max and those folks. Uh, you had the youth group there. You had your, your Boy Scout group. And then the pickup locations too, right? Mm -hmm. um, besides KCF, who else was involved on that side? There's also the uh, law firm, which is over there. Okay. They helped pick up the presents here when the church office was closed. Okay. And they also, um, Nabea Maido, the restaurant also was a pickup location. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah. So this was really one of those projects where a lot of people got involved to help, right? Like a true team effort. And and God used you, man, is a, to lead us through this. So that's awesome. Um, okay, so one more thing I wanted to ask you, and it's going to, uh, I thought I sh I'll share this. But um, tell us what happened when uh, your dad wanted to uh, remove two families from the tree. <laughs> Right. So, you know, the in defense of your father, uh, we wanted to make sure that every member of a family got at least one gift mm -hmm. and 17 families were provided us. And your dad was a little nervous that we would be able to provide one gift for each member of 17 families. So uh, your dad did not put two families on the website on the angel tree. Then what happened? So I was like, what? <laughs> but we, um, what is it? We got a text from Auntie Cheryl Sue from Salt and Light, and mm. she was saying that maybe her small group was interested in sponsoring one or two families that could, that buy all the presents for them. Mm. And so we thought, yeah. well, we think we know some family, <laughs> two families specifically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so because of that, every single family was on the angel tree. Mm -hmm. Every single family got at least one gift per member. Mm -hmm. That's that's awesome. Uh, yeah. well, what did that teach you? That God can do anything. What did it teach your dad? That God can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> and to grow my faith, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Josh. Dad is really proud of you. Uh, you know, you, you taught this almost 30-year Christian, uh, something about having greater faith and uh, really looking to see where God is already moving and how do we join him. And it's not about our plans, uh, but what God is doing and getting behind that, right? Well, thanks, Josh. 
Awesome, man. That was amazing, right? I mean, truly, truly amazing. And a, a testimony in real life uh, with real people who face real challenges and God provided real answers. And um, I'm just so blessed that I got to witness it like firsthand um, because it was someone in my household. <laughs> so God, everybody, is always at work around us. And I can, I can, Josh, myself, Tammy, and all of us who were involved in this Aloha Angel Tree project can testify that that reality is 100% true, what Blackaby was saying in experiencing God. And importantly, we should always, always seek where God is and what he's doing first so that we can become involved in that. It's, it's about being God-centered, not us-centered, right? You know, could, could Josh have prayed for God to bless the Aloha Angel Tree? And, and we did, actually, as a family, right? He could have he just said, yeah, God, I'm going to do this thing. Can you, can you, you know, fulfill all the 17 families' wishes and, and bring people uh, and, and stop there? But when you look back on this, on this story and what God was doing, see, God was at work on the Aloha Angel Tree way before the four weeks, right? The beginning of the four weeks of this project. He was at work and stirring in Joshua for quite some time. Here's a, a visual graphic of, I think, when you look back and you replay the tape, you know, in the Coach of Heaven show. <laughs> and we look back and we look at this, we can see clearly that God is truly at work, even when sometimes we often don't see it. Here's the Aloha Angel Tree, right? An online service that connects people with needs with those willing to meet those needs. And everything is created and delivered in about four weeks time, okay? But then you look back and there's this original idea of the year-round Aloha Angel Tree that comes from Joshua's dad one year ago, maybe about August, September 2020, but it goes nowhere. In spite of having some really great volunteers in James and Anne and Julie and Pauline and Joshua himself signs up to say, we want to do this, but we really didn't get it off the ground until a year later. Why? What was going on? We got to look back at the original angel tree at KCF too, right? When I remember this so clearly, uh, Tammy, Josh, and I were driving in our car to Waikiki, and I don't remember why we were doing that. And Tammy and I were just happened to be talking in the front seat about probably discontinuing the angel tree that year. And Josh was in the back seat, a little guy, and he's just like, what? No, we can't do that. We always do the angel tree. And I remember Tammy turning around and said, Josh, why is this important to you? And he says, people have needs and we, we are about meeting those needs. Tammy and I turned to each other and we're like, oh man, <laughs> like what kind of Christians and what kind of Christ followers are we? You know, our son in the back seat is telling us, uh, you can't stop the angel tree and I, and I will lead it, you know, I will do it if you will help me. And then we look back and then we see how there's this Boy Scout Eagle rank requirement for the citizenship in the community merit badge. And, and Josh's mom happens to be the merit badge counselor. Like, and, and, and the timing of this, right? And they're talking about how they wanna complete this merit badge by the end of 2021. It's one of these 13 required merit badges for Eagle Scout. And it's actually one of the more involved ones. And so Tammy goes, you know what? What issues do you folks care about in our community? And besides missiles heading from North Korea, <laughs> they talk about homelessness. These 15, 16 year old boys are talking about homelessness. They're talking about what can they do to be part of the solution. And so they wanna go and reach out and find an organization who's on the front lines developing solutions for the homeless. 
And the idea comes up, well, what about the shelter? That those guys in Kahalu, those igloos, those domes. And it becomes like, hey, Joshua's dad, he knows the executive director of that place, Daniel Kaneshiro. And we find more about these, the, the shelter. It's, it's targeting single women with young children. These women are substance free. Right? They're mentally stable, they're willing to work and get gainful employment, and they're open. They're open to faith-based ministry. They go to church, they get parenting classes, counseling classes on finances, and most importantly, they build community in Kahalu with each other. Daniel tells me that a lot of the families, when they leave, and there's been 19 families now, women and their children who've graduated from the transitional housing there. This is only since 2020 now. So in about a year or maybe two years time, 19 women have now left the shelter and found their own place. And this is the amazing thing. A lot of those women built such strong bonds and relationships with each other that they continued to meet with each other and support each other. That sounds to me like God's ecclesia, right? It's amazing what they're doing there. And when I think back to even Daniel Kaneshiro, the executive director, who's my friend when I used to work at Sprint Hawaii, you know how Daniel came back to the church? It was back, I wanna say in 2005, KCF was doing a purpose-driven life campaign. And I had invited Daniel to join a group that I started at Sprint with several co-workers to go through that Rick Warren book. And that's how Daniel came back to Christ. He came back to the church and God is using Daniel now to help solve the homeless problem as part of the executive director at the shelter. So what's amazing about this, right? If you look back at the Aloha Angel tree and we ask ourselves, God, what are you doing in, in this circumstance? And you replay the tape. We see very clearly that God was working on this not four weeks ago, not a month ago, not even a year ago. But he had already put the pieces in motion close to over 20 years ago. That's crazy. <laughs> If that's not a testimony of God always at work around us, I don't know what is. And so, folks, when we start to look at our own lives and we want to know how we should proceed in our lives, how do we experience God, I think it starts with this very foundational reality that we got to look around, open our hearts to say, God, where are you already doing something? And can I be part of that? Would you join me in prayer now as we close today? Father God, I think about the Aloha Angel Tree in December 2021. And I, I encourage everyone here, Lord, and my prayer for everyone here is they ask one simple question when they look at their life and they ask, could it be? Could it be you, God, that your hand is here so that I might join you there? Could it be that although the original idea for the year-round Aloha Angel Tree that came from me in August 2020, that you, Lord, had a different plan, that you had a different leader in mind. It wasn't going to be me, but it was Joshua who would lead this, my son. Could it be, God, that you were stirring in Joshua's heart that people have needs 365 days a year and that we should not stop the angel tree. In fact, by making it online, we can make it all our year round and we can reach more people who don't even go to church. Could it be, God, that you lined it up so that Tammy, Josh's mom, would be the merit badge counselor at this particular time to connect the Aloha angel tree with the shelter, to fulfill the merit badge, to connect with Boy Scouts in Troop 325? 
Could it be, Lord, that the Holy Spirit, you had stirred the Boy Scouts that night and they were talking about issues that they cared about, that you stirred the, the issue of homelessness here in Hawaii? Could it be? Could it be that as far back as 2005, you were calling Daniel Kaneshiro back to the church? That you knew that he would become the executive director of the shelter and start to solve the homeless problem in a God way? Could it be, God, that you are always at work around us? That when we replay the tape of our life, we will clearly see your will. And it's up to us to adjust our lives to become involved in what you're already doing. Could it be? Could it be, God? Could it be that you are at work in our situations, in our circumstances, no matter how good or bad they are? Could it be? And we just want to repent now before you, Lord, that we ask you to come and bless our plans when it's your plans we should be seeking first. Could it be that this would be a new beginning for us, Lord, to see our situations differently, to remove our own personal will and replace it with yours? Could it be? Could it be? In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, everyone. It's been an a awesome journey, uh, a pleasure to share with you today. And could it be that God is going to stir you right now in this moment to follow him and join him in what he's already doing right there in, in the midst of your life, in your situation, good or bad? Could it be? God bless. Thanks, Dave, for sharing with us. It's been very encouraging to hear, and the timing is perfect. Tune in next week in the new year as Pastor Mark shares about looking ahead in 2022. Also, coming up in the year are the final days of the Memory Verse Contest. Our Experiencing God series has ended, but kids, you have until January 9th to submit your entry forms, so let's do it. Thanks to those who continue to send in their tithes and offerings. Remember, there are three easy ways you can give through our KCF website, Church Center app, and through the mail. And please don't forget to check out our Blessed Business page. Let's bless our local businesses through prayer, patronage, and promotion. Lastly, please subscribe to our website, follow us on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe right here on our YouTube channel. Click that bell so you get notified when the new videos are coming out. We're so glad you joined us today. God bless. Bye-bye. How does the Aloha Angel Tree work? Hmm. So we... Uh, uh, I lost it. Uh. <laughs> Watch this. Morph cut, morph cut, morph cut, morph cut, morph cut. Your, your head's cut, cut off, your head's cut off. Morph cut, morph cut. Your, your head's cut off. What is a morph cut? Ding. Ta-da! What? Why does why does this tree have a tag that says "Made in China"? Look at this. <laughs> nobody nobody cut it off. Are we planning to return it to China?
Thank you.